Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to Infraspace, a game where you get to build your perfect space colony. And in my one I prioritise over engineering, efficiency and spreading messages we can all get behind. But today I think it's time to finally fix our population problem. Down in the bottom left you can see our population is 2392. That means our houses are nearly full. We have 2,406 of those. But our number of jobs is over 3,000. So we need to attract more people. And then we need to house them. <laughs> Oh, I forgot I did that last time. That's pretty good. So this is our current housing area. Each one of these, they sort of upgrade as they go along. So they start off as a basic habitat, which takes various things. This one needs survival food. And once it's got that, it upgrades to a decent habitat, which requires home appliances. Yes, things like microwaves and dishwashers and washing machines. And once it gets those, it upgrades to this, a crystal maze or a nice habitat. These require computers and parks. Yes, parks actually get delivered in this game. The joys of the future. And then it upgrades to one of these, a residential building where you need a good meal, a home robot and some culture in order to upgrade to the next level. And every upgrade, you can house more and more people. Now we've sort of got that fairly balanced. No one's really upgrading, no one's really downgrading. So I think what it might be time to do do perhaps is build more houses so build all the roads and then we'll come into the basic habitats and we'll build a load of these but first a massive thank you to atlas vpn for sponsoring today's video now as we know the internet is full of people i like to describe as architects they are people trying to steal your data but you can use the link in my description to get protection for just one dollar 99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee if it's not for you with atlas you can do all the good stuff that a vpn offers you like watching a series that isn't available in your country without using those dodgy websites. This means that you can watch the show without worrying about ads or malware, which thankfully Atlas VPN protects you from anyway. But where Atlas VPN really shines is they offer the best VPN speed with over 750 optimized servers for reducing ping and lag. It's like upgrading your normal concrete roads and infra space to the crazy fast highways for super speeds. It also allows you access to play games that may otherwise be available due to geo restrictions and no more having to buy games for expensive prices just due to your location. Atlas VPN also prevents your ISP from interfering with your connection whilst you play online games and it hides your IP so you're no longer at risk of DDoS attacks. It works with loads of your favourite platforms like Windows, iOS, Android. Right now Atlas VPN is running a huge discount it means you can get a 3 year subscription for $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. Click the link in my description to get this incredible deal. You can tell I'm British because <laughs> we're not used to grids in this country and this this is not a very square grid. Look at all the best. But a couple of bends never hurt anyone. Unless you're a deep sea diver, then you really don't want the bends. Oh man, this line in particular, it's going to kill some OCD people. <laughs> but I think we'll stop there because looking at these numbers, we now have more housing than jobs, which means we're going to have unemployed people. That's never a good thing. And nor is all these oxygen demands. So in order for anyone to live on this planet in their basic habitats, they need oxygen. It's not too surprising. And currently our oxygen comes from all the way over here. These machines. And currently they're all in these lorries trying to get out and there's proper gridlock. The game is unpaused. There's just... Oh god. There's just way too much traffic. So none of our oxygen is able to get out. Yeah, unless it's being produced over here. These guys can get out fine. So I think what I might need to do before I can fix that. So you can see these earlier ones, they don't have oxygen either, which means they are downgrading. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to shove a road in to go down the back of these and into there. There you go. And now we're taking some traffic away. I might even want to do some traffic management. I'll just give them options. I mean, to be honest, I should probably reduce the number of lanes. I'm going to reduce the number of lanes. We're just going to do a two-lane road because that's all we need up there. All right, so that should ease the traffic down here. So what I could do, I could just grab a normal concrete road, move that node back a little bit and then just do a road that connects all of these and basically what that does that gives all of these oxygen guys an option they don't have to go down that way now they can come around if they're sensible and come out another road it also allows the carbon ones which are going onto this railway to come out the back although what's happened here they're all they're all clogged up i'll tell you what i'm going to tell them you have to go forwards there's no point trying to go down there because that's always going to be busy so if i make them come down the next one and yeah, that's better. That is better. All right, so now all these basic habitats are built and they're satisfied with oxygen. Now we're going to need some people. Now the way you attract people to your colony is you come over here 
And we have these two spaceports, and this is where people land. However, with all these houses to fill and only two spaceports, I think we need to increase. So I think over here where we've got some space, we're going to build some of these, some spaceports. Perfect. And now everyone is arriving via space. Base plane. So as people continue to fly into our colony, we need to connect them to the rest of the city. So I'm going to use this here, the highway, which just means people can travel super fast. No waiting around. We'll go under our railway that we built last time. We'll just hop over this road, come up here and connect into there. Probably replacing that like that. Next up, it's probably worth with this road, just connecting it into this highway. I think what we'll do from this are uh, maybe under the bridge will come off and go up and connect into there like that cool awesome if you look all of our new population they arrive in these the g wagon g wagon g wagon g wagon g wagon g wagon <laughs> oh man i love that people actually appreciate the g wagon this in the comments someone even asked for a 10 hour one so i'll upload that soon <laughs> right nice look at all these people flying in look there's so many Nice, well that's very successful, mainly down to the efficient shape of this area, I believe. Uh, next up, I feel like we're still taking too much purple traffic down there. I might try and do another little slip road, perhaps off here. So let's go from there, say, and come down. We've got to go over, and then like that. Right, so now you can see people, they are mainly going down here, and they're sort of coming around. So hopefully less traffic will get down here, meaning we can fix this maybe. And also, I feel like the devs added traffic lights recently. Have I unlocked those yet? I'm not entirely sure if I'm honest, but look, everyone is lacking in oxygen. So I'm going to build a new oxygen plant, I think. But it takes three people to run the job, which is the downside and the sort of balance you need to strike when you're doing building in this game. Of course, I do it all the time. I only ever build enough of these that my population will cope. I would never just go mental building as many as I can. Because that wouldn't be very engineer-like, would it? Oh god, neither of this right. <laughs> Oh dear. All right, so the good news is the trucks are leaving. They're heading down there. They're sort of... <laughs> they're sort of ruining the motorway off-ramp there. These guys are absolutely creaming it down. Then a lorry just like cuts in front of them. Right, so hopefully that is one crisis averted. I feel like I've built quite a lot of oxygen there. Like, that's, that was funding this entire area. Although, look how many houses I've built. I've built so many houses. I didn't realize that. Right, so let's try and fix this traffic. What I might do, I might actually delete like a bit of the road. And then I just come back and I build from there up to there. And then, can you see how much traffic is coming down here now? That's because that's the only way to enter over here. Uh, let me just check my traffic management. So under there, that's fine. This one, I think I'm going to move this yellow lane. In fact, I could do my lanes properly just to make this make sense. So if we replace that stretch of road with a two, I mean, that could just be a one, really. There's not many people coming from down there. I love how it costs you 62, <laughs> 62 concrete and six steel to replace a three lane highway with a one lane highway. But yeah, for some reason, I'm doing it to the entire thing. So this is all going to be one lane. I just hate the thought of like four lanes combining into one at the bottom. Hence, I've got to do it this way. Right, so here we have two lanes. They meet into one and they just merge like that. That's fine because this is fast road. So they cream it over here, go over the top. Then under here is where the slip road joins. Then it goes into a two lane road. And then over here, the third lane joins and that's a three lane highway. Excellent. Next up, I would really like traffic lights because I don't know how they work. I have seen them. They definitely exist. I don't know. I don't know. If you do know, let me know in the comments. But for now, let's continue with what we're doing. Look, some of these are upgraded to residential building four. Look, people are moving in. Nice. Okay, so I think in a little while we should have fixed that problem. Although there's a few people that aren't getting the parks. Is that what you're after? Yeah, they need a park delivered. So we currently only have six parks. So I might just build a few more like up here. So uh, that's a pretty easy fix. One park there sorted. And look, this is where they make the parks in Bloomin' Universe Limited. <laughs> There you go. There is a park in this green jeep. This green hover jeep. So here's going to take it to where it is needed. Because in the future, no one takes their dogs to a park. 
They take their parks to their dogs. Oh, it seems, are people hungry? Oh, they need survival food. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. This first strip, I think this will be our food strip. So a simple farm is what we need. Oh, they're quite small. All right, it's the new survival food district. You can see they're just growing crops in there. And then these darker green trucks, they leave with the food for people. Nice. All right, so next up, last time we started trying to finish our researching and we'd research everything that needed the blue and the green research. And we are on to the yellows. So we started making motors. And if you look at our yellow science pack factory, motors, green science, and blue prismy things are needed. Do we have blue prismy things? It's a neural processor, not a blue prismy thing. And for that, we need microchips. Ah, oh, yeah, and the gray stuff, the nanotubes. So I think we said motors would be built here. They'd be sent back on the train and sent along this way. For our nanotubes, we need carbon and just sand. We know that our atmosphere processors produce carbon, but a lot of these carbons go up to here, the steel plant area so perhaps instead we want to take the carbon from our new atmosphere processor area so we could build them along here then we can put them on the same train line or the same road yeah that sounds like a plan that does sound like a plan uh, the only downside i made all these roads one way so i think we're gonna have to make them two way which is fine we just do a bit of that and then i'll probably just extend these roads because I imagine that I'll want to build more of those in the future. So we'll do two arms like that. And then we'll say, come off like here somewhere. We'll do all of our mining along this stretch. So basically we just want large sand mines. So we'll plonk those along this edge. They've been placed very close to the railway. Mind it, train. <laughs> so we've got eight of those. And then it's just nano factories for the win. Although they need a lot of carbon. Five for every two. Now, I might do some math, actually, sort of work out how efficiently to do this. So each one of these makes carbon every 16 seconds, and this makes sand oh, every 6 seconds. So we've got 36 of those. We'll divide that by 16, so we're making 2.25 carbon per second. And if these make one sand per six seconds so oh that's worked out quite well so if we do 2.25 carbon if we times that by two just to make it easier then that's the five carbon that we need so the one sand we can just half so basically we just need to make one sand per second and that will use up all of this carbon so to make one sand per second we just need six so I'll delete that one and I'll delete that one so we're now making five carbon and two sand every two seconds but it takes 50 seconds to create the nanotube so if we put in 25 oh my god they're huge they're huge and the roof spins the roof spins <laughs> right i think that's 25 and look at all the carbon trucks leaving yes it's working beautiful so they come through here the sand will then join them and then through here is where the nanotubes will be made. Although we need to add more power to Network 1. And Network 1, I think, is this huge wind farm. And I tell you what, it might be worth losing all this wind, replacing it with solar. Now, the solar plants are 200 concrete and 100 steel. Uh, so we can build 100 of them. That makes 50 megawatts each. We need just under 1,000 megawatts. Oh, but the wind turbines are so... <laughs> They're so cheap. 50 concrete. I did not realize that these were only made out of concrete. It's very impressive technology. I am going to add just a load more wind turbines because I'm lazy. I can't be asked to dig up everything. So there's a load more windmills. We just got to connect them with power poles. Ooh, why are they all red? Ooh, why are they red? All right, so they're all connected. Is that enough power? Yes, plenty of power now. Although, what is going on over here? We've got a bit of a crisis. Oh, no, everything's downgrading. They're not getting any food. Oh, God. God, pause, 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 pause. Okay, we need to build more food. Oh, and parks from the looks of things. More parks, more food. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. So we'll just extend our farms. Yes, I realize this is eating into my jobs, <laughs> which I thought I'd fixed, but now I haven't. All right, so that's all the food anyone could possibly want, surely. And then I'm just going to add a couple of parks. Then we're sorted. We're still, we're very much struggling for workers. Oh, dear. The thing is, we do almost have enough housing now. And I think as these upgrade, we will have enough housing. The trouble is, our population is diminishing. And that's because this game's a little bit, a little bit sneaky. Oh god, look at that traffic. <laughs> 
Why is no one moving? Yeah, it's a little bit sneaky in that you need to have like an average tier of your apartments. So this residential building, this is tier four. This is the highest it can get at the moment. Three is a crystal maze, two is that thing, and then one is that. You only actually attract people if you come over to these. So if we click on one of these spaceports, you can see immigration rate is low. And that is the trouble in that your average habitat level has got to be above a certain amount which is 3.8 in order to attract people so pretty much unless most of our habitats are the residential building tier 4 we're not going to attract anyone so we're in a bit of a death spiral at the moment because we can't attract new people which means we don't have workers which means the habitats downgrade which means we don't attract people which means we don't have workers it's a vicious cycle uh, but i do I do actually have a lot of things on the roads. They're just sort of stuck. So I might do some traffic management, a bit of TM, and try and fix this. So I think if I add straight throughs on all of these roads, then surely that will help. Right, there you go. Traffic is much better, but I think that's just because everyone's died or buggered off or something. <laughs> So there aren't actually any people in the jobs. But look, all the warning lights have gone. And look over here, all the planes are coming. Does that mean we're attracting people? I don't know. Does anyone see any G-Wagons? Oh, there's one, there's one. G-Wagon, 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 G-Wagon. Right, okay, we might be okay. Everything's upgrading again. It was a bit of a disaster, but I think we've overcome it. Uh, these home appliances as well, these... It's a bit mental. I tell you what, I might. Yes, I do have a slip road there, but it's like after this. I tell you what, I'm going to delete that slip road and I'm going to make it come off before that. It's just like freeways. You want to do your diverge, your, your road off the motorway before the merge. So let's say, I don't know, from there. There we go. We may as well upgrade this road as well. I think I'm going to do two lane highway and then along here is just going to be a one laner because basically I want to encourage people to turn off there yeah lovely so they turn off they dodge that pillar they drive through the sand <laughs> and then they're back on where they were before that's all good and then ones that go straight come down to here I think we can probably fix this traffic management so let's get rid of that lane make you guys do that Sorted. So hopefully you guys will get your washing machines a little bit quicker. Now there are also a load coming from over this way as well. So that should be fine. Anyway, let's go check on our yellow science. So the nanotubes. We have nanotubes. That is good. I think I actually did efficient maths there for a change. <laughs> And that's the perfect amount. So next in that cycle is using this, the Neural Processor Factory. So that takes three nanotubes, two sand, and two of the microchips. And we are making microchips over here. But from clicking around, I think all of this is completely efficient. So I can't disrupt that. But we got plenty of iron here. So I'm going to do another road off there. We're going to build completely over these solar farms. Which you'd think would make them less efficient. But I will see. Over this copper, because I might want to use that later. And then over to there-ish. Meanwhile, this copper isn't really being used for anything at the moment. So we'll come off there, jump over that road. So cops coming from that side, iron's coming from that side. Do a load of electronics along here. We'll do a load of the computer chips there and then jump back in there. So when it's built, it looks like this. There we go, just loads and loads of warning lights. But don't worry, the trucks are on their way. And then we'll be producing electronics and then the blue microchips. And then when we're combined with the nanotubes, we can make the new stuff that we need to. And then we'll be making it yellow science. So there's our first few neural processes. However, I can't put any more because I've actually run out of concrete. We have no concrete. We might have to try and fix that. But the plan is once they're built, we then put them back onto the trains. So do I have enough concrete? All I want to do is get up to there, get onto that road. There we go. There we go. So they'll loop around onto this highway, which goes into the train station, which means if we come back over to where our science is over here, we do a road coming out of our train station onto there. And then we connect those roads together. We can build a cheeky little yellow science pack factory and hopefully some point in the future they will have enough resources to actually make them but yes i think we'll have to wait until next time to find out if it all works it looks like it might do actually all the warning signs are going down but yeah how exciting i love i i just love like look in the background there's like crazy roads over there there's our san francisco over there huge bridges it's <laughs> I love this game. I love this game. Anyway, guys, peace, love, and architects suck. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.